The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show with the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten and head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Frankie DeBusk Show is presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal, located on the 11 Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. Applebee's, eating good in the neighborhood. Sodexo, a worldwide leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. By Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by. Pick up a Hunt Brothers Pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons, with three locations in Green County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, Cleveland, and Greenville. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Tusculum Pioneers had a 13-point halftime lead against the Newberry Wolves and watched Newberry run to a victory this past Saturday. Hello again, everyone. I'm Brian Staten for the Frankie DeBunch TV show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. It was the 14th time that the two schools had met, and for Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk, it was 5-1 well, and one from Setchler Field. You would think they had a pretty good feeling of playing on the road in South Carolina. 19 players on the Tusculum roster from the state of South Carolina. Yes, it is somewhat of a rivalry. Last year a shootout 63 to 56 and a little more fireworks this past Saturday as well as we're joined now by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk. I say fireworks it was an exciting football game probably for a fan it was homecoming there at Newberry but from our side of it our perspective a lot of good and a lot of bad on Saturday. Well, Brian the way the year has gone uh, unfortunately it, it, it's good to, to get a feel of, of the flow of that game and making plays and getting stops and Causing turnovers, and you know, it, w it really was a uh, it was a good showing by our football team, uh, especially there for about three quarters, and that's the way it's been all year. We, I, I tried to tell our kids at halftime uh, that it was going to be uh, two more quarters of, of war, and if we thought we had it won, we're mistaken because Newberry was going to come out, and uh, unfortunately, we got the punt blocked, uh, and gave them a touchdown, and that just gave them a little momentum, and and then we just couldn't stop the run. You know, they didn't even try to throw the football; they just kept running it, and. Uh, didn't tackle defensively like we need to. And uh, quite frankly, offensively, we start the game uh, three of three. Or our first, third, first three third down conversions were three for three. Mm -hmm. And we finished the game five for 13. So we, we didn't do our part either there uh, from an offensive standpoint. It just, I don't know, we're, we're, we're getting better and we're making strides. But unfortunately, the year continues to, to evaporate on us and disappear. So one point losses are hard. And, you know, we were so excited to get a one point win last week. So, you know, usually those come back and get you. But, uh, you know, our kids are still fighting, uh, still enjoying playing. Our seniors is who I feel so sorry for right now with all the high expectations we had and, and everything that's happening uh, with our injuries and everything else. It's, it's, it's been an interesting year. The Tenskillum Pioneers do fall by a final score of 42 to 41. Just a thrilling contest, a great first half for the Pioneers. And then Newberry ran for 493 yards in this football game, as we're going to talk about. That's about 360 yards above their season average. We'll talk about that and so much more when we come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Nice. Hi, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> 
pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Laughlin Memorial Hospital provides innovative, caring, compassionate service to their patients and the community through integrity and honesty in all that they do. Laughlin Memorial Hospital in Greenville since 1939. Whatever you do, do it well. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. The Pioneers and the Wolves meet for the 14th time from Setzler Field, where Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk, 5-1 all-time against Newberry on the road there. And keep in mind, he was also 5-1 now in one-point games. Keep that in mind, and maybe there'll be a trivia question at the end of it. Let's pick up first quarter highlights with the Pioneers driving with the football. The uh, first quarter brought to you by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Brian, I told our, our coaching staff, it felt a little odd being that we're playing there in the daytime. Generally, we play them at night, but uh, they had a great crowd. Uh, they, they, they're pretty good up front defensively, and uh, they, they stop us there on the first play of the, of the series. And, you know, Torrey Slavin, man, we just keep talking about Torrey. He's probably not getting as much credit as he deserves. Look at this ball. And that is an unbelievable throw. Uh, it's a nice catch by Zambian. Zambian one of the South Carolina products, so I'm sure he was excited there to get in the end zone. But Tory Slavin, the you know, sophomore quarterback from up in Oneida, Tennessee, just continues to be solid for us offensively. Slavin to Xavion Smith, 65 yards. Um, took just three plays, 62 yards, a minute 25 off of the clock. Pioneers add the point after and lead it seven to nothing quickly. Newberry will have the football after, uh, well, an attempt at an onside kick. Yeah, well, our kick wasn't exactly like we wanted it, but I, I believe we had the football. Uh, and then when the, the, the pile got congested there, they ended up just taking it from us and uh, underneath the pile. But, uh, you know, it's one of those roll the dice kind of calls. We thought we had a, had uh, we had we'd really schemed them up and thought we had a chance to get it. And we did have a chance, we just didn't come up with it. So it's first down and 10. Brian Ehrlich last year threw for 515 yards against Tusculum. Brandon Bostic had 322 receiving yards in that 63 to 56 Newberry Thriller from Pioneer Field. Brian Ehrlich starts in the backfield, and you said they were going to be a zone read team, and the defense was ready for that as Alkeem Sherman. No gain there. Brian Alexander with the stop. Again, I thought we played really well in the first two quarters. This drive here, we actually hold them. I think we block a kick, and they don't get any points. And after you kick an onside kick and give them the football there on the 50-yard line, you, you hope your defense can step up, and they did. Uh, I don't know, just sort of a tell of two halves, but you know, we're doing a really good job here. He gets a few yards to the receiver, but our kids are flying around and making things happen. That's Brandon Bostic once again. Uh, this year, he had 236 yards receiving coming into this game against the Pioneers. And again, last, that's through six games. And last year he had 322 receiving. Uh, Newberry, the quarterbacks for Newberry and for Presbyterian have three of the top, have two of the top three performances in the state of South Carolina alone in uh, passing yardage uh, against the Tusculum Pioneers. But on this day it was a totally different story as this drive would stall thanks to Mr. 91, Nick Smith, with his sixth block of the year, a new school record. That's unbelievable. Six blocks, you know, to block a kick is something. To block two kicks in a year is unheard of, but Nick has blocked six kicks. You know, Nick's a sophomore from over at Seymour High School there, and uh, he's still just growing up, actually. You know, he's not uh, really blossomed to be the player he can be, but uh, he's, he's making some strides, making some plays, and obviously doing a phenomenal job blocking kicks for us. Pioneers take over from the 16-yard line, and Brian Marshall, his longest run of the year, 18 yards right around the right end. And Brian Marshall feeling so good, we'll get another carry. Doing a good job running the football, you know, uh, Mark Kolb. Had a good plan, and Caleb Slover there on the sidelines now for the last couple of weeks helping us with our running back rotation. Uh, doing a good job getting our kids in the game. And, you know, we're moving the chains. We're having some success. Uh, you know, again, uh, Oneida product here hitting uh, Deontay. I guess Deontay's one that's just played phenomenal the last you know, four or five weeks, and he's a senior that we're going to surely going to miss, but happy for him here. And uh, this is really a good throwaway by, by Slavin. Nobody realized that, but he had us covered and do a good job throwing it away and give us another down. Torrey Slavin has not been picked as a starter. As a matter of fact, Pioneer quarterbacks have not been intercepted in 181 attempts after this game. Logan Cornelius did throw a pick last week, but that was it. And then uh, Torrey Slavin. Mark Kolb said, we got to learn to take our shots in this football game. Don't worry about your pass percentage, your completion percentage. And he didn't worry about it, and he let it fly. And Rashad Carter with 48-yard reception here. It's another phenomenal throw. I mean, Rashad makes a good catch, but he didn't have to break stride. Slavin put it right where we needed to. 
Here we do a good job trusting to get outside. Marcus, being athletic, gets around that, that guy there on the end, and we've got an additional blocker. I think that's senior Freddie Jones out there giving him a, a, a last little block. But great execution by our offensive football team. That's one of the times we got inside the five there and produced a touchdown. We need to continue to do a little better in that area, but uh, really, really good job there on that drive. Pioneers lead it 14 to nothing after that eight-play, 84-yard drive after the blocked field goal attempt by Nick Smith. Newberry would get the football and drive down the field as uh, they're looking for the uh, first score of this football game. It's a physical game in the trenches, I guess you could say, and I don't know how I got zoomed in on that guy holding our guy, but uh, it leads to a touchdown here on this drive. Yeah, unfortunately, they, they missed that call. Should have been a holding on there. Des Rayford's trying to give some, uh, some pressure, and uh, they got us locked up. But I guess, I guess that's the, the name of football, uh, and unfortunately, we, we give up a touchdown there and got to do a little better job in coverage and got to get to the quarterback. But take the ball offensively and uh, hit Deontay. You know, that right there is a seven, eight-yard gain. It seems like nothing, but that's really our, our extent of our running game. That's just a great job. Our receivers blocking on the perimeter and Slavin hitting Gist quickly with the football and making some things happen. Gist has... Lost his helmet again. We, we do the Gist tracker, and uh, Gist had lost the helmet twice uh, on this particular day. <laughs> so every game Deontay has played this year, he's lost the helmet. Now, you don't usually want your quarterback to throw back across the grain, but Xavion Smith, you said, has been tremendous in practice and is really starting to become a leader. Well, he dropped that ball there just a second ago, and then he responded with a big catch. And, you know, I even talked a little bit to Slavin after that throw, and before I could even tell him what I wanted to tell him, he already knew what was right. He's... Uh, he, uh, just, you know, if you throw it back across the, your grain, the grain and you make a, a completion, uh, then you're, you've made a spectacular play, but that's a dangerous throw. But uh, Tori obviously knew more than I did there. He made a good throw and good catch. And here they, uh, they get us, but uh, they get uh, slaving by his face mask. We get a face mask penalty and keeps the drive alive. Eli Charles with the face mask penalty. is an interesting fact about Eli. He actually walked on at Florida State back in 2005 and gained significant playing time in 2006 and then was out of football until last year when he showed up at Newberry and now as a junior uh, playing in the linebacking trenches. As Deontay Gist, again with this little shovel pass, has been playing so hard. 12 receptions, 155 yards on the day, and we'll talk a lot more about Deontay's day coming up. And then Fred Jones, one of his longest runs, right up the middle uh, as he goes for seven yards on second down and two to pick up another first down. Great effort there by Freddie. Freddie's one of our seniors back there in the backfield. And uh, probably doesn't get as many touches as he would like, but he's very consistent, do, does what we ask him to do, and he's made two big runs right here on this particular drive. And, uh, you know, we're, we're doing a good job protecting the football here. When Slavin hits it's, uh, Carter. I thought he got in, but obviously he did not, and he went out there on about the one and uh, uh, gives us a chance to go in our, our bone package. And they, they get us a couple times here, unfortunately. We got a little better job there. We, we missed the, our, our tackle missed that, that guy coming through the gap, and we got to do a little bit better job uh, converting. Yeah, it says this was maybe one of the most athletic defensive fronts uh, the Pioneers have seen since they probably even Georgia Southern. Uh, they would hold Tusculum. The Tusculum would get down to the two-yard line, would end up attempting a field goal out of this to start the second quarter for Logan Cornelius, who would come in up and down year for Logan, but everything looks good right there. There's a little bit more about the uh, kicking game a little bit later on that's a little bit iffy, but a good first quarter for the Tusculum Pioneers as they would take a lead 17-7 to at the end of the first. We'll come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show right after this, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. We're going to start. Dean, what's wrong? We all want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I think it's a world. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. 
Visit online at greencoach.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staden. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. The Pioneers lead 17 to 7 into the second quarter as Newberry will have the ball when we pick up our coverage with the second quarter, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Great jump start to our football uh, from our football team in this game, and uh, get up 17 to 7, and we got to get in the end zone when we get inside the two yard line. Unfortunately, uh, thank goodness Logan came in and uh, hit two field goals on that day, two big field goals. Really uh, was one of our players of the week as well, I think. And, it was a good job uh, for us. Unfortunately, here we, we got to make that tackle. Uh, we got a guy blocked. It, quite frankly, doesn't fly in there and get his face mask involved. And they scored, and all of a sudden, even though we jumped out to two score lead, they're right back in it. And uh, put uh, B.J. Spradlin in the backfield. He's one of the freshmen that's uh, learned our scheme and buying some time, and, and he's really doing a good job. Actually, he was the big dog winner this week uh, for one of his big blows on one running back. But uh, moving the ball offensively, Deontay again getting uh, seven or eight there, giving us first down and. They're slaving, being very, very smart with the football, and unfortunately, uh, Big West there has got to make that catch and get his first catch as a pioneer, but got a little excited and couldn't hang on to it. Deontay Gist does not get too excited. This is as excited as Deontay gets. 32-yard reception uh, on second down and 10 as he would move the change. B.J. Spradlin again. Uh, he's just a tough, hard runner as he'll go for 16 yards here with a new career best for him. So first and 10 for the Pioneers down at the 16. Yeah, they, uh, they, they, we have a guy not come off there and block that linebacker, we might have scored. But BJ's uh, doing some good things. And you know, if Slavin hits Deontay there, we might have scored. You know, it's one of those, uh, one of those kind of games. But I thought our kids up front really fought hard and played hard. And uh, this was a good call there. You see his toes on the white line. And uh, we did, again, we throw it up, give a shot a chance. We think he's a good football player and better than most he's going to line up against out there. And unfortunately, we don't get it in the end zone when we uh, get down there to the 12 yard line. And, Got to kick a field goal, and Logan comes in and, and drills it. You know, Logan is a true freshman that has really uh, made some big kicks. He's not uh, his consistency's not been what we want, but I think he's nine for 14 on the year. And as a freshman, it's probably better than we even could expect. Pioneers take the lead 20 to 14. This is something of an oddity for Newberry football. They've only been sacked twice this year. Make it three times now. It's Terrence Smith moving up the chain, the charts at Pioneer history gets Brian Ehrlich for a sack. I'm happy there for Terrence uh, Smith. A great person. Uh, been here in this program for four good years and uh, happy that he's able to get in there and make a big play for us and uh, put some heat on that quarterback. 37 career tackles for loss, including 14 sacks, sixth in school history. He's right behind Craig Pritchett for fifth all time. Now, Brandon Bostick, this was the most uh, production they had from him, this little wide receiver around uh, run, uh, what do you call it, jet sweep, or however you want to you know, phrase that, as that goes for 10 yards, and then it's third down and five, and this really affected Newberry all day, just the drop passes. Yeah, you know, we, we did, uh, or they had three or four drop balls that uh, could have really resulted in some big gains, uh, but again, that's part of the game. We did as well. We had a few drop balls that could have resulted in big games, but uh, you got to play a little bit better defensively at times, and we all know that. Uh, here we try to flip one out there to, to Brian and, and drop one, and if he catches it, he may not get much, or he may break the tackle. You never know. But here we almost hit, uh, I think, at Zambion, and you know, those are just a few throws that we'd like to head back as well. A uh, penalty, though, wouldn't it give the Pioneers some new life, give the ball to B.J. Spradlin. Again, just a very hard runner on third down, a very short third down and a yard. He'd pick up the first down, and then the most incredible catch you may ever see. What a great catch. It's a good throw, but man, is it a great catch. One-handed, the ball's about to hit the ground. The DB there even thinks it's, he's dropped it. You know, he stops and Rashad just keeps running. Just a great, uh, great big time catch. That's obviously why Rashad was one of our players of the week. And he has made three of those catches in the last uh, couple of weeks. So hopefully he'll finish out his career. Just a great young man, been in this program for four years. Came in here as a quarterback out of Atlanta and has really done well. Getting ready to graduate here in May uh, in four years and just he's going to be a great father and a great husband one day and just excited that he can make a play like that in his, in his senior year. It's the ninth longest completion in school history as it goes for a touchdown. Carter had just three catches, 134 yards, but he becomes the school's all-time leading receiver, surpassing that of Calvin Britt. He now stands at 2,500 and 58 yards. So the Pioneers at the end of the first half with what you would assume a comfortable lead, 27 to 14. We'll come back, we'll take a look at your second half. That's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. 
Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Coach, what makes a winning team? A winning team is individuals that are working toward one common goal. Coach, for over 30 years, Andrew Johnson Bank has been a winning team here in Greene County. It has always been our goal to provide superior service to our customers. Andrew Johnson Bank will never quit providing extra effort to make loyal customers in the community. Thank you, Coach DeBusk. Thank you, Monica. Andrew Johnson Bank scores points with friendly customer service, top-notch bank products, and convenient locations. Tusculum College and Andrew Johnson Bank are a winning team. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not when we step up on the field. That's not a small town, but we still do it very big. Back and noise, back and noise, back and noise, back and noise. We grind hard for the rings with the diamonds on it. Back and noise, back and noise, back and noise, back and noise. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, Tusculum versus Newberry. Frankie DeBus Show brought to you by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. They also bring you the third quarter. Pioneers have the lead at 27 to 14, but Newberry has the ball to start the second half. Told our kids, Brian, right there at halftime over under the trees that uh, if we thought this thing was over, we were going to be in for a rude awakening. We had two more quarters to play, and they were going to come out guns blazing. And uh, I, I thought we really played well here defensively. You know, we're, we're, uh, we take the uh, initiative here and they keep trying to run that little fly sweep to, to Bostic. He's a big man, trying to, hard to bring down. Uh, there's Luke getting on the play and Jibison over there needs to get off that block and, and make the tackle. Brandon Bostic, a 16-yard run. Brandon did not have the type of day receiving uh, that I'm sure that he expects, that he wants every single game. One catch, six yards, but Bostic was part of 12 people to carry the football. Three carries, 35 yards on the afternoon. That's about to change here coming up. Brian Ehrlich still in there at quarterback for Newberry and uh, facing a third down and going deep and going into the end zone. Yeah, that's another one of those catches that we're referring to. If he makes that catch, it's probably a touchdown. Uh, you know, we're, we're fortunate. You know, we almost jumped off sides. I think they thought we had jumped off sides, but uh, here we, we take the field on our punt team and uh, we have a, a low snap and we don't block the uh, guy rushing from the right and Bad things happen when you uh, don't execute, and uh, that does not happen here very often. Uh, we work so hard on our special teams, and we got to get some things corrected there. But that right there put them right back in the thick of it, obviously. Gave them a little life, a little momentum, put them a score down, and, uh, and then they take the field. And, uh, a little, they had a little different uh, air about them. 27-21 after the Richburg return here. Ehrlich incomplete to Bostic. Aaron Morgan actually tipped that football so that neg negated the uh, pass interference, that's what the flag is. You see there, it's first and 10. Newberry has the ball after get forcing another three and out against the Pioneers. Rossetti, a 39-yard punt to get it out of there, and so they wave off the flag. So it becomes second down and 10, and uh, a little later on, uh, this young man hurt Tusculum with his feet, but on this play, Laurente Archie comes up with a big, booming play big back hit, at the 31. Big tackle, good play by Laurente. I wish we were calling Laurente's name more and more. He's got to keep making more plays for us at that Nitro and Diamond position that he plays. Uh, but, uh, you know, we went into the game a little bit uh, unsure what they were going to do throwing the football since they had so much success. And there's a true freshman uh, getting some action, big country as we call him there, putting some heat on the quarterback, and uh, hopefully that young man will make a lot of plays for us in the future. Kashad Lyons, a true freshman from down in Atlanta, Georgia area, getting some defensive line action. Nick Kinney had come in, missed only one field goal on the year. That from 47 yards didn't quite get it, but you've got to believe that everybody's thinking 91 is going to get a block. So. The point, the uh, field goal fails, no good. Pioneers drive down the field on fourth down and 10, unable to convert. So from the 30, insert WT Murden at quarterback. 
and John Gadson. 48 yard run right down the far sideline for big yards and puts Newberry in great position and then Murden would take it in from 21 yards. You know Brian we had number two there hemmed up for probably a loss. One of our defensive linemen Fred Walker had him and we, we didn't finish the tackle. We have a missed tackle. He breaks out there and goes for 48 in the next play. Uh, we don't pull our trigger. They run a little draw and get a touchdown and uh, as we said at halftime they're in it now and take the lead and we got to go fight some more. Tusculum down now 28-27 for the first time in the football game, but driving Marshall for 13 yards, Gist a completion for 13 yards, Slavin uh, very patient and actually didn't see him do this through the first two games uh, that he has played, but that was a progression. He's actually now taking reads and looking down the field. Feeling more comfortable as the game's slowing down a little bit and does a great job here getting us a big first down on third and long, not forcing the football. and. Made some, uh, made some throws. He, he's starting to have some confidence. He makes some confident throws, and that was a great job there. And here's Marshall hitting it out there. And Marshall, I told him that's one of the best things he did right there all day. And he got six or seven more very important yards putting his foot in the ground and getting north and south and giving us a chance to, to keep the drive alive. It's third down and two, and Torrey Slavin would find Michael Jones. And uh, Michael is one of those guys replacing uh, Michael Rodriguez for the Pioneers, he and Wesley Powell, and it set up this really as no one picked up Deontay Gist. Great job by our offensive staff seeing that uh, as a possibility, and Slavin did a good job faking it. And uh, I think Michael did a good job faking the screen actually to get their attention, and Deontay obviously wide open, and you know Slavin just flipped it out there to him. And, didn't try to lead him and didn't try to miss him, just made a good throw and gave us a chance to score. Deontay led all receivers with 12 receptions, 155 yards, and a touchdown. And oh, by the way, we haven't even talked about his second touchdown just yet. But the Pioneers reclaimed the lead right there at the end of the third quarter, 34 to 28. We'll take a look at your fourth quarter highlights when we come back with more of the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Dean, what's wrong? We don't want to go to the game, but I just don't think they have a car big enough for all of us. Don't worry, Dean. My dad's inside Gateway right now buying us a new SUV that can fit all of us. What do you think, guys? Yeah, let's, let's go. go! Hey, Ty, you ready to go to the game? Yeah, I'm ready to go, Dad, but we have some new people wanting to go to the game. Well, let's go! Yeah! I see you down the world. I'm Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, asking you, like I do my son Ty, to support the Tusculum College Athletics all year long. And for your next car buying experience, please visit Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Go Pioneers! Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa! Hey Chris, nice. hi Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So, who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> Pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the seven ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half price appetizers late night. Anything you'll ever need to rent or buy is at Grand Rental Station. Business, commercial, or residential, from forklifts to backhoes to tents, party goods, wedding supplies, and much more. On the Andrew Johnson Highway in Greenville, Grand Rental Station, 639-6160. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. Once again, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staden. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBus Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. The Pioneers have the lead at 34-28 going into the fourth quarter, but Newberry has the football when we pick up our coverage. Your fourth quarter brought to you by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Uh, we're in a dogfight. We have retaken the lead now, and uh, the crowd's getting into it. It's very emotional. We've got a great crowd there for homecoming at Newberry, and uh, they're, they're feeling a little life. And Right here, we got to get off the block. We got to make a play, and uh, unfortunately, we don't. That number two again. I was really worried about him going into the ball game. He's a he's a backup running back on the depth chart, but sucker can run and made two big big runs there and gave the Newberry some life, and they retake the lead on us. 187 rushing yards is what he gained. He lost six. John Gadson goes 15 carries, 181, and that touchdown from 53 yards. And the lead back for Newberry, 35-34. Short-lived lead, second kickoff return for a touchdown this year by Deontay Gist. Man, Deontay can get it now. He just outruns them all there. and uh, Little choppy feet, but he can really run and uh, does a great job. Uh, our kickoff return team did their part, did what we, they were asked to do, and Deontay did what he's coached to do. Just 
make the first guy miss and take it to the house. And boy, we were uh, very excited on the sidelines. We're now retaking the lead. A lot of emotion going on. Uh, we got to go out there and stop them and keep this, uh, keep this thing alive. Four kickoff returns for touchdowns for his career to this season. The school's longest 94 came against Brevard. That one goes for 90. The point makes it 41 to 35. Newberry with the ball. Gadsden for a yard. Really one of the best uh, defensive stands in the second half for the Pioneers after Newberry held the ball for more than 12 minutes in this fourth quarter as they face third down and nine. Yeah, we couldn't get the ball back from Kashad Lyons right there, the freshman I was talking about. He's got to make that play. There's Luke Harris on the missed tackle. You know, I, I hate to say how many missed tackles we had on the day, but we got to do a better job of that. And then they, they set us up for a fake punt. Um, they executed here, and we really weren't ready for it, unfortunately. They do a good job keeping their drive alive. And in a close ball game, you got to make that play, and, and we're just uh, we're letting them run free right now. I think our daubers are down a little bit, as the old schoolboys say, and we're not, uh, we're not performing as well as we need to, and they drive right down the field. And, End up fortunately putting it on the ground here for us. The only turnover of the day from either side of the, the, the field. Uh, they fumbled that one and we come up with a big recovery. And man, was it huge right there with the ball on the three yard line. Terrence Smith would recover it there. But again, the Pioneers so far in their territory deep and not necessarily just going to let it fly and just go deep uh, and couldn't do that. So they would force to go three and out. And this play really typifies the type of fourth quarter it was. No question. We have him hemmed up right there. We got four or five guys. There's Justin Arrington will get on the play. Um, he does. We get over here and contain him. Looks like we got him again. And I'm telling you, just keeps breaking tackle after tackle. We're not. Uh, we're not doing our part defensively. Bottom line, we got players that are not making plays right now. Terrence Wilson would go for just 11, but it was big 11. Murden, he's a big kid. Would actually be held from the end zone by Luke Harris here, but it would be just one play later. Ryan Williams, 34, his only carry of the season. One of the 12 guys who contributed to the 483 yards rushing would get his obvious first touchdown of the year. So Newberry takes a 42-41 lead. Pioneers have the football first and 10 from the 28. you got to feel confident with the uh, way the offense had performed, but not so much here in this fourth quarter. No, we didn't perform very well uh, in the fourth offensively. We got that touchdown for, uh, from Deontay on the kickoff return. And here we have a penalty that just really hurts us and uh, thrown from there on the back judge, and we might have been holding, but... Uh, we, we're not executing, you know, that uh, we're feeling a little pressure. And obviously in this type ball game, somebody's got to step up, make a play. And uh, we have made so many plays on the day from an offensive standpoint that uh, we're close. We're very close again, but uh, Slavin there overthrows Deontay. And, and then uh, we're, we're trying to find somebody open and, and Slavin unfortunately can't find anybody. And we got to punt it back to him, thinking there's plenty of time left if we can stop him. And unfortunately we were not able to do so. And uh, uh, we get the ball back. Uh, they're late, I think. No, they actually, actually. They ran the clock out. The game was over, and we, we go over with a one-point loss. You know, last week we had a one-point victory, a lot of celebration. Uh, this week we got a one-point loss, and um, feel like your heart's falling out. But uh, it's the way the ball's been bouncing this year for the Pioneers. 5:02 on the clock when Newberry got the ball back, and Tusculum's defense just couldn't get off the field. Last year, Newberry threw for 515 yards, and Brandon Bostick had 322 yards receiving. This year was all about the running game. W.T. Murden coming in that second half. A little shot in the arm for Newberry uh, and a team that has been up and down. A team that has only averaged 21 points a game this year, but obviously on this particular day, homecoming, they had anything that they, they needed, and that was in the running game as they run for 483. We'll go over those numbers coming up. Newberry gets a season high in points. So do the Pioneers. Pioneers, though, suffer only their second loss in the by one point in the coach Frankie DeBuscara and fall to Newberry by a final score of 42 to 41. We'll come back and we'll have our Applebee's chat and we'll meet our players of the week. That's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. Gateway Ford on Highway 11E is rapidly becoming the number one Ford dealer in the region. We're changing the car business for the better. Buying a car has never been easier. No add-on stickers. Plus, we'll appraise your car right up front. You pick the car you like and have your best price in less than 30 minutes. Plus, at Gateway, you'll receive a lifetime powertrain warranty on every new vehicle purchased. The clear choice. Gateway Ford, home of the big deal on Highway 11E in Greenville or on the web at homeofthebigdeal.com. Consumer Credit Union. Loans? We can do that. Three locations in Greenville and Mossheim. At Consumer Credit Union, everybody can join. Visit online at consumercreditunion.com. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Greene County since 1945. 
York Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBusk Show, presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. It's time now for our Applebee's chat. After the game, we caught up with Rashad Carter. All right, back on the Frankie DeBusk TV Show. It's our Applebee's chat with Rashad Carter. Today, Rashad, a, a, a unfortunate loss, number one. But number two, uh, you're now the school's all-time leading receiver. You surpassed Calvin Britt, and he's on his staff. So how does that make you feel? I mean, I feel excited about it, but we still lost. That's how I feel. So. It's still a loss. The catch. You'll be remembered for this catch. Uh, a one-handed grab. You're going to see it on the show. It's coming up here in just a few moments. Um, tell me about the play. Tell me about the catch. Well, I just knew they didn't have safety help over top, and I just told Coach I can get past the defender. And he kind of was like, he was running with me like a little bit ahead of me, so I know I had to do something, and I just reached out with one hand and caught it. It was good, and it went for six. The one that didn't go for six, you're probably going to get grief about that you didn't catch that. So what happened there? I don't know. I just... Uh, I, don't, I can't even tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we caught the human highlight reel. Let's see, 12 catches, uh, or actually three catches, 134 yards. Just three catches, though. I mean, you did all that on just on just three. Are you screaming at guys, hey, give me the ball during the game? No, I mean, I was telling Coach, you know, I need I need to get some touches, but we're just running our offense, you know. All right, as a senior on this team, you have three games left. There's still a lot of things can happen. Where do, where do you guys what do you guys do right now, and where do you go from here in this point in the season? Um... We just took a tough loss. So all we can do is just go back to work tomorrow. All right, Rashad, unfortunate tonight. Thank you for your time. All right, you're welcome. That's Rashad Carter for our Applebee's chat. Our Applebee's chat with Rashad Carter. We thank him for his time in the loss. It's time now to meet our players of the week. We'll start on offense with our Sodexo Offensive Players of the Week. The guy we just talked to is one of them, Rashad Carter, the senior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Three receptions, 134 yards, a 76-yard acrobatic human highlight reel touchdown, the ninth longest reception in school history. Deontay Gist, the senior out of Welford, South Carolina, ended up with 12 receptions for 155 yards and a touchdown. And on special teams, we'll talk about that. But the, that duo, the senior duo of Gist and Carter, closing in on a national record. Gist and Carter had combined for 379 receptions in their career. The record in Division II is 399 by Lock Haven's John Spinoza and Brian McGinty. They did that from 93 to 95. Those two have a realistic chance in the first quarter this coming Saturday with Mars Hill to break that national record. Also offensively, Torrey Slavin. He went 22 of 41, 392 yards and three touchdowns. 181 passes now for Pioneer quarterbacks without throwing an interception. That is an impressive stat. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Player of the Game, Katron Jelly Becton, had a tackle in the game. His primary responsibility was stopping number 11 in Brandon Bostic, who held him to just one reception on the day. He's a sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Our Green Coach Tours Special Teams Players of the Week, Logan Cornelius, the freshman kicker from Chattanooga, two for two on field goals, 24 and 34 yards, and five for five on extra points. And Deontay Gist, the senior out of Burns High School there in South Carolina, had a punt return for three yards, a kickoff return for 90 yards, and has become the all-time leader in all-purpose yards in school history. Gist also leads the conference in receptions per game at nine, receiving yards per game at 108, all-purpose yards at 188, and kickoff return average now at 33 and a half yards per return, which is also 10th in the nation. His 1,411 kickoff return yards are second, behind that only, of Marcus Foster, his teammate. He's returned two kickoffs for touchdowns this year and four for his career. The Andrew Johnson Bank call the game. We call him the human highlight reel for a reason. The touchdown reception for Rashad Carter. And there's the snap from Slate. He's looking to go deep for Rashad Carter. He's being held in the secondary. One-handed grab at the 40, 30, 20, 10. Unbelievable. Rashad Carter and the human highlight makes an appearance today. Time now for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. Stats as close as the game was. 
For the Pioneer, 75 yards rushing. Newberry, though, 493. That's 361 higher than their season average. Pioneers threw for 392, held Newberry to just 75 yards. Touchdown was 22 of 41. Newberry, though, just 4 of 13. Murden in the second half attempted only two passes after he came in the game. Average per completion, however, for Tusculum 17.8, for Newberry 18.8. Total offense, Pioneers ran 71 plays for 467, a 6.6 .6 yard per average. 568 total offense for Newberry in the football game. The staggering stat, Pioneers had the ball just 2 minutes and 53 seconds in the fourth quarter, had it just 25 minutes for the game. Newberry had it, held it for 12 minutes in the fourth quarter, 34 minutes for the game. Third downs, Tusculum 5 of 13, Newberry just 3 of 12, but Newberry was 3 for 4 on fourth downs. Tusculum was 3 for 3 in the red zone, but only one of those in the red zone went for 6 as Tusculum hit 2 field goals inside the red zone on the day. Well, it's definitely a tough day for the Pioneers, not only statistically, but when you take a look at what it has done for their overall record and where they stand, now just two wins on the year for them. Meanwhile, Newberry impressive with that victory as uh, they were good in the league. Now they go to 3-2 and two in South Atlantic Conference action after losing their last two. The coach, Frankie DeBush, joins me as we wrap it up. That's coming up next. When the Frankie DeBus Show continues, presented by Gateway Ford, Lincoln Mazda. Applebee's 2 for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Coach. Hey, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, 2 for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the air. Tails. <laughs> Pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the 7-ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half-price appetizers late night. Creekside Market has three locations in southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway. Creekside Markets in Greene County. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Greene County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. This will be Heron. He'll keep it as he nearly he lost the football. Heron loses the football. I thought he had on the initial surge. It's Pioneer Ball. Nick Smith. What a game for Nicholas Smith from Seymour, Tennessee. B. Rad G here with the Frankie the Best Show. Now I'm going to take it back to Brian Staten. Welcome back into the Frank Uta Bus Show presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. So we try to put this to bed. The Pioneers fall to Newberry 42 to 41, fall to 2 and 6 on the year. Newberry improves to 3 and 4 on the season with that victory. And again, Coach DeBus now falls to 5 and 2, not only at Setzler Field all time, but also 5 and 2 in one point games. That's another one point game this year. All right, Newberry aside, here comes 21st ranked Mars Hill, 130, local Heroes Day, Saturday. And, oh, by the way, the nation's leading rusher is coming to town. Yeah, Jonas Randolph, number eight, is a special football player that they uh, turn and toss it to a lot there at Mars Hill. And we have our challenges. Obviously, we're not uh, stopping the run very well right now. And they're uh, ranked nationally in, in rushing offense. Obviously, uh, he's either leading or right there at the top. Uh, Lenore Ryan did a great job containing him last week. He only had 50-some yards against them. But week before or two weeks before, he had 330 yards and 46 touches. So. They're going to give it to him. We have a tremendous challenge defensively. Uh, you know, I, I really believe our kids are going to respond and play hard, and it's one thing that we have been doing. Um, it's, th when this season's over, we're going to look back and really not have answers as to why we weren't successful because we're still playing very hard to put ourselves in position to win ball games. We've, you know, we beat Lenore Ryan, who's uh, ranked right now regionally with a chance to make the playoffs, and they go to Mars Hill and beat Mars Hill by 30 in a 51 to 21 contest at Mars Hill last week. So. The league's a crazy up and down league, and unfortunately right now we're on the downside. We can still come out of this thing and make it positive, but we got three more chances. Our seniors are saying that, and we got to ride this thing out and hopefully have some success. You said it uh, even before all these region rankings come out. 
one through eight can beat anybody, and I do believe that uh, wholeheartedly in the South, in this South Atlantic Conference. Yeah, there's no question, Brian. We're uh, we're neck and neck. Uh, very a lot of parity in our league, more so than ever before. Who, who would have ever thought that Carson Newman, Catawba, and Tusculum are three teams that are at the bottom in our in our league? Now I'm not knocking the other schools. You know, right. But, uh, they're they're working hard, doing a great job. They're beating us, and more you know, hats off to them. But uh, in years past, those were the three teams. A lot of times, that were at the top. And, a lot of parity, a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players. Uh, this league is a special league. It's unique, but special, and uh, we've got to continue to fight here these final three games, see how this thing pans out. It's also a special game with Marcel. Unfortunate last Saturday. Best of luck Saturday. Thank you, Brian. Pioneer coach Frankie DeBusk in search of win number 80 here on the sideline for the Tusculum Pioneers. 28th meeting this Saturday against the Mars Hill Lions as Tim Clifton will come in here, the league's second all-time winningest coach, only behind that of Mr. Ken Sparks himself down there at Carson Newman. He'll bring down his Mars Hill Lions here. And in the previous 13, well, 27 encounters, 13 of those have been decided by seven points or less. So another tight series. Pioneers are 5-0 and over their last homestand here against the Mars Hill Lions with last year Mars Hill. And John Rick, that's right, the son of Mark Rick, the head coach at Georgia, leading the charge at quarterback for the Mars Hill Lions. It is local Heroes Day. It is also another chance for a fan to win a 2011 Ford Mustang, courtesy of Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda. So make sure you show up. Only cost you $10 to get in, and that $10 could win you a brand new car. You're going to go tell your friends, how much you pay for this thing? Ten bucks? All I had to do was hit three field goals. That's all you got to do. We'll see you Saturday. Local Heroes Day and the Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda Halftime Field Goal Contest continues from the Nicewanger Sports Complex from Pioneer Field on Saturday. You can join us for the coverage of Tusculum versus 21st ranked Mars Hill beginning at 12.30 with the Pioneer Kickoff Show. Kickoff will be at 1.30 again on the campus of Tusculum College. For the coach, Frankie DeBusk, I'm Brian Staden, and for all those behind the scenes, Zach Self and Nathan Humbert, go Pioneers! This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show featuring coaches interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Gateway Ford Lincoln Mazda, the home of the big deal. Located on the Elevity Bypass in Greenville. And brought to you in part by Applebee's, your neighborhood bar and grill. There's no place like the neighborhood. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Greenville, Morristown, Jonesboro, Johnson City, and Cleveland. Grand Rental Station, anything you'll ever need to rent or buy. Consumer Credit Union, with three convenient locations in Greenville and Moss High. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Green County. Laughlin Memorial Hospital, whatever you do, do it well. By Green Coach Tours, celebrating their 66th anniversary. Special consideration from Comcast Cable. The Gateway Ford Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.